Um, I think for me, the first thing, the story I always like to tell is uh, I was watching Nova. I was watching public access television. Um, so I think, you know, watching these, these, you know, which used to put on great programming. And so watching PBS, watching Nova, and watching their specials on Rome and especially, but they also had some on Greece as well. Uh, watching them and just being inspired and in awe of this great culture that uh, we know so much about, wish we maybe knew more about, um, and has influenced us so much. So I think, you know, just watching that and, and has always had, I always had an interest in it. Um, but my first sort of real uh, contact with Latin, at least with some of the languages, was Latin, and that was in eighth grade. Uh, I had the option, we had to take a foreign language, and it was Spanish, French, or Latin, and I chose Latin, and sort of the rest was history. By the junior year, I remember reading Catullus and Marshall, mm -hmm. and those were some of the first authentic Latin texts, you know, unadapted, that we were exposed to in that class. And so I always have a bias for them. I love Catullus, I love Latin poetry, and uh, for me, I think that, that those are like really strong, and Pliny too, I remember reading lots of Pliny's letters. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so for prose, it was a lot of Pliny, and for poetry, Catullus and Marshall. Yeah, oh, I, lo I, I love his letters. I remember I think we read around, it was like kind of planned, I, although at the time I didn't think that it was, but um, we read, I remember we read like one of his like haunted house ones like around Halloween or something, you know, so there's just like such great connection uh, in terms of like <laughs> our own calendar and what's still relevant culturally and, and stuff he writes about. And so maybe my own worldview, but I just think there's an inherent tension between antiquity and modernity. And I think that that's the most interesting thing and I think as scholars, as people interested in promoting Greco-Roman studies, I think we should be aware of that and understand that that tension can be a good way of, of communicating the, what's great about antiquity too. I think if you're new to Latin poetry, it certainly can be intimidating in the sense that you are uh, faced with concepts and, and terminology and just sort of a poetic history that he's writing in that you don't know, right? So there is a lot in first reading that you may not understand or may not even know that that was code for something, right? Uh, so that can be a challenge. And I think when you start to, if a teacher tells you that and you're reading with a commentary usually and the commentator will tell you, oh, this word means this and it has, you know, polished means a certain thing, right, in poetry. Um, once you start to learn that, I think that can be intimidating to a lot of students uh, and just readers in general. But I think at the same time, it, uh, it shows you there's a deeper meaning to it, right? There's a richness to it that I think, uh, because it's poetry, just adds more to the intrigue of it and you want to learn more about that so that you can get the full sense of the poem. Um, especially in something like a Roman civilization or a Greek civilization class where you're reading so much in translation um, and you're, you know, reading a lot of primary sources and it's just, there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of it's different and other and strange to them. Um, at the same time, I think it's our task to get students to see what's so the same, what, you know, how much of what they're going through is, is, is the same. And um, you could have that in poetry easily with emotion, but even in a lot of the historical texts, they're talking about political things that are very relevant, right? And so we're still dealing with those same issues.